For our last application, and yes, there are four videos instead of three as I had originally planned, but for our last application, we're going to take a look at derangements. When we talk about derangements, we're talking about a permutation with no fixed points, which means nothing ends up where it's supposed to be. Quite often you'll see people who are taking their coats or hats or whatever to a party. They're throwing them on the bed and then they just randomly pick up a coat when they're done or a hat. So when we talk about derangements, we're talking about what happens that nobody gets their own coat. So what I've done is I've done a very simple example where we have three people and therefore three hats. So we're assuming that person one has hat one, person two has hat two, person three has hat three, etc. So we can see there are a total of six trials, which makes sense because the first person has three choices of a hat, the second person has two choices of a hat, and the third person has whichever is left. So there's a total of six different ways or six different trials. Now, looking at how I have it set up, we can see that of those six, there are two where nobody gets the coat that they actually own. So for the others, we have at least one person getting the coat that they came with. So if they're asking for the chances, we would say, well, that's two out of six. If they just want the number of ways, obviously that would be two. Obviously brute force is not the way to go. So we can look at this using the principle of inclusion exclusion, which of course makes sense because that's what we've been working on. So if we just let each condition be that person I got their coat. So C1 is person one got their coat. C2 is person two got their coat. Then we could find S0, S1, S2, S3. So let's talk about how this happens. So obviously there are three factorial total ways that we could distribute the coats. Again, the first person has three choices of a coat, the second person has two choices of a coat, and the last one just gets whatever's left over. Now, if we set one coat, we're saying person one gets their coat. So there's two coats left and two people, so two factorial ways to do it. And then of course there are three conditions and we're just saying that one of them is gonna be met. So that's where the three choose one. Using that same process, if I have two that I'm setting to be the correct coat, then there's just one factorial left to permutate, which obviously just means the last person gets their coat. Um, and then of course, three choose two because we're choosing any two of the conditions. And then lastly, if I set all three, then there are no codes left to permutate, so zero factorial. So again, now all I have to do is set it up in our formula to say S0 minus S1 plus S2 minus S3 and so forth. Now, what I wanna do is obviously that we could find that very easily in the solution is two. But I wanna take you through um, a little bit of the math as well. So if you have three factorial and three choose one, two factorial and so on, notice I can replace three choose one with the equivalence of three choose one and three choose two and three choose three. And then we can see that the two factorials cancel and the one factorials cancel and the zero factorials cancel. And so we end up getting a little bit of a pattern here where we have three factorial and then my denominator is increasing by one or we can just factor out that three factorial. So again, why am I bringing this up? Well, because someone much smarter than you or I has evaluated this and come up with a an estimation which we're going to talk about in a moment but again i can find this very easily three factorial is six and then one minus one is zero then i have one half minus one six which gives me one third six times one third is two so two is my solution but if i'm asking for probability again two out of six or 0.3 repeating now, if I do the exact same question, but with 10 people instead, you can see the complexity of the work is no different. However, the amount of work 
is a little bit more. We still can see the pattern that we saw forming for three, which is we start with n factorial, and then that value is decreasing as we set each one. And of course, 10 choose one for one condition, 10 choose two, 10 choose three, and of course, the alternating minus plus. So same uh, pattern that we were looking at before. And again, as you can see, the work is not more complex, it's just more of it. I can do all of that and find my solution of 1,334,961. And then again, if I needed a probability, just divide that by 10 factorial. So what we can do instead is explore a formula for derangements. So we looked at D3, and derangement again means nothing's in its right place or there's no pairing. So D3, we had three factorial, three choose one, two factorial, three choose two, one factorial, and so forth. And for D10, that's the one we just talked about, and we found our total of 1,334,961. Now, as I said before, someone much smarter than you or I found an estimation for the number of derangements. So this is the pattern that we talked about we're taking n choose k, where k is obviously increasing, starting at zero, all the way up to n. And then negative one to the k tells us that the sign is alternating, plus, minus, plus, minus. And then n minus k factorial, so that's the nine, eight, seven, six. So this is the pattern that we've talked about, but we haven't talked about this. And that is what makes this amazing. So instead of having to do all of that work, um, someone has discovered, and I don't know who that was, and, and honestly, I don't care. I'm just glad they did. In general, we can take n factorial divided by e. So again, e is that irrational number on your calculator. And if you use your calculator to find that approximation, so 3 factorial divided by e gives me 2.207, which rounds to 2 which matches what I had found with two before. If I take 10 factorial divided by E, I get 1,334,960.916, which rounds to exactly what I found when I did it by hand. So again, is it always going to be correct? No, but it's a great approximation. So it's going to be correct or very close to correct. Let's take a look at two practice. And for both of these, I'm just going to leave it in the notation. So I'm not even going to multiply it out. So I'm just using that n factorial over e. And I'm going to leave my solution just like that. So go ahead and try both of these questions. And then when you're ready, press play to see how you did. For the first one, very straightforward. There's 14 people. And we're all leaving with a different gift than they brought for the white elephant exchange. If you don't know what a white elephant exchange is, feel free to look that up um, or just think about that as how many ways can they leave without their correct coat. So again, 14 factorial over E, uh, not even breaking a sweat. I don't even need to get my calculator out. I'm going to leave it just like that. The second one's a little bit more complicated. We have 12 women going to a party. It says how many ways can no woman get the correct purse or keys? So essentially what we're saying is the person doesn't get the correct coat, so that's 12 factorial divided by E, and the person doesn't get the correct keys, so times 12 factorial over E. So that's going to be my solution. Coming up next, we're going to revisit proof by mathematical induction.